Hey, my name is Max. We're here with Intu, and we're talking to Mr. Arseni. Who do you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm Arseni. Uh, I'm co-founder and CEO of Daoism Systems. We are building DAOs and DAO infrastructure. Cool. And okay. I'm Elko, and I uh... what 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 Max? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. If we haven't met, uh, please call me Elko. It's a short name of elementary complexity. It's my name everywhere. If you want to find me on Telegram or Instagram. Um, and I am the janitor at the Taoist. And um, we are a project that works on the cultural side of the Dao space, uh, connecting Dao communities in events, uh, tech, and art. And yeah, there's a lot of exciting things coming. Cool. Awesome. So guys, I kind of put together a few questions as I sent over before, and I just wanted to thought we could kind of like kick off with four people who are not that, uh, how should we say, familiar with DAOs. Um, would any one of you kind of explain what a DAO is in your opinion, in normie words, so to say? I'll go. Once. Okay. Um... DAOs are digitally enabled organizations which allow people to govern something directly or usually something is some form of um, treasury that contains digital tokens that usually have some type of financial value that can then be sent um, towards goals, right? Um, it's basically a very sophisticated internet vending machine. Uh, where you put something inside and you have a way to press that button. The cool thing is in between you pressing the button and you getting the, the cola bottle is the rest of the community who has a certain power of deciding if giving you that thing for that purpose is a good idea or not. Now, there's a thousand ways to skin a game theoretical cat, um, and we're probably going to explore them in the, in the tooling aspect of the discussion here. Um, and yeah, I think I have a sort of um, relatively unique perspective on DAOs because I actually, they kind of saved my life. I, I used the first one that actually achieved the governance states to pay all my bills. And at that time, I think I was the only person going through that experience. Um, and now it's a much larger world of people that actually work for DAOs. And it's super cool to see how it's exploded over the last four years. Yeah, that's cool. So when you say you were the first, one of the first ones, that would have been in 2018 or so. So we're looking at yeah, mid-2018, yeah, mid um, there was this DAO deployed by DAOstack, which is kind of like a research and prod DAO where they would just create, uh, there was a, a software back then called Alchemy. Uh, and the role was like testing it out. And the best way to do it was to they put a call for proposals out. The proposal should improve the DAO stack ecosystem in some way. And there was some money that got added to this DAO every week. And basically a friend of mine told me like, hey, you're good at writing, you're good at storytelling, you're good at making videos, you're good at all of this and we really need this. So learn how to use this. It took me a couple of months actually to go actually look into it. Um, but then when I did, um, it turned out to be much easier for my personality in the situation I was in, which is an immigrant in Germany, fighting with the language, fighting with the way I look in that society, not being the way that the society would like me to look. Um, so it turned out to be way easier for me to actually do work that was relevant to me and useful to the client when that relationship was inverted. So usually as a service provider in the, in the creative field, like design, video, copywriting, whatever, the client will approach you with the need and Genesis was actually the first time where I could literally go look at what DAO stack was and out of my intuition of what they needed, I could write a proposal and send it to an entire community of people and not just one decision maker. And I fell in love with that dynamic because, um, because back then DAOs were truly uh, autonomous which means if the proposal passes, the money moves itself. There's no multi-sig step there. It makes the community actually discuss, right? Um, and and a, lot, a lot in terms of deliciousness and pain is caused by that pressure to make the decision, right? And I learned a lot through that time. And then it led me to getting hired by the company and then losing that situation where I was... Um, 
only paying myself through collective intelligence decisions, basically. Um, and it's funny because I made actually less money after that, like than I would have if I stayed on a on a linear. But at the same time, I learned a lot about the emotional sort of psychological pressure of living proposal after proposal versus having a salary. And, and a lot of experiments have been done in that way over the last few years on how to build these institutions. Okay. Um, it's one of the hottest topics, I think, uh, actually, like compensation amounts and cycles and, and what type of profession gets what and where do people live. Uh, we actually haven't solved for all these things yet. I also wanted to like see if Arsene feels that my definition of a DAO is missing something. Uh, well, it's definitely not missing. Uh, you've, I, I think you've pretty much, um, like, you know, described, uh, what, what it is. I, I maybe would just put it in my own words that, um, DAOs are, they're like how I see them. They are pretty much the new form of human organization, you know, like the LLC or like the company was, you know, the breakthrough in the human organization when we have like this limited liability companies in some, you know, uh, nation state jurisdictions, like for example, United States or, or, or uh, Federal Republic of Germany, uh, and you're being protected by the, um, by the sort of military and police power of this nation state. And that allows you to uh, hold this, you know, private property of the company and function as a, as a business, like make trades and, uh, you know, create products, whatever. Uh, with Ethereum and blockchain technology, we pretty much managed to do that in the internet, but without uh, the violence that's coming from the from the uh, from the state, because uh, here the private property is sort of being uh, protected by the mathematical and like cryptographical uh, consensus rules of of, of of the state, and as um, as Elko has mentioned, uh, the, the DAO stack, which was one of these first, uh, uh, first smart contract uh, based DAO uh, frameworks that allowed these automatic executions of, uh, of, of proposals on, on Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so, and as, yeah, as also Elko has mentioned that, uh, for him, that was like the, this first experience of, you know, getting paid by DAO, by creating a proposal, that's the entire business model of our, uh, of our company, DAOism Systems. We are like a group of service providers to the DAOs. And that's, uh, that's how, uh, we solve two things. We basically, we provide services to the DAOs. We're getting paid and we're paying to people working with us, but we are also bridging this old, old world of, um, nation state based, uh, uh, contract based, uh, systems, uh, by having a company incorporated in Berlin, by hiring people, paying social securities, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, all those things, but also working in this uh, decentralized world of, of, of Ethereum blockchain by uh, creating proposals and, and, and doing all those things that uh, were mentioned uh, before. Okay, interesting. So yeah, I'm going to revert to my to my questions. Like, how are you guys seeing DAOs kind of evolving? And I would assume that tooling is a big part of this, because as you said, DAO stack was running on smart contracts, which of course would have been prohibitive during, you know, gas gas fee when gas fees are spiking right how are you seeing and i think Arsene, you might be the best one to kind of answer this is like how are you seeing the development of those kind of evolving right now as well as how does that go in tune with the new kind of tooling options that are being developed for it yeah that's uh that's an interesting one so yeah a little bit of like historic perspective here that those uh smart core smart contract based uh like frameworks like uh, DAO stack and Aragon and Moloch, they were like the first ones uh, that appeared in the DAO space. And like back then, it, when in 2018, for example, you're talking about DAO, you're talking like, the, you would be asked like, are you an Aragon DAO or like DAO stack DAO? Or uh, that was the thing. But then um, yeah, DeFi summer came in uh, summer 2020 um the 
gas prices spiked. Like there was a lot of yield farming going on there. So people were staking tokens, like withdrawing tokens. Uh, DEXs started to be a thing uh, finally. So people started to trade on DEXs. And uh, that basically um, overpopulated the network with transactions and it got really expensive uh, to execute, automatically execute those uh, proposals on, 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 on DAOSTAC because the, when you're talking about human organizations, uh, you have a lot of like rules that you have to actually code in those smart contracts and uh, that sort of architectural approach became obsolete back then. Uh, like people stopped uh, using uh, DAO stack, people stopped using Aragon mostly. No, but two, two things happened. Two things happened there, right? One, um, just like stopped. If your main app became extremely prohibitive to, to do things, uh, but the DAO community, both DAO stack and what was a much more growing in terms of different voices, the Moloch ecosystem, quickly adapted to moving governance to XDAI. Uh, it was really, really fast. Very surprising and beautiful, like just moved to, to XDAI. Uh, DAO stack lagged a little bit, but then Alchemy got deployed on XDAI rather quickly. And then governance became affordable again. And we all started learning how to live in a multi, multi-chain world, um, including having uh, one implementation of Prime DAO. And I think there was some DAO on DAO stack that did the same where uh, you had uh, governance happening on a DAO on XDAI that then executed, then then was ex- executed cheap, more like w- just on big chunks on a Ethereum mainnet DAO. If all kinds of hacks were born, but um, um, we also learned back then something that I think might be important for the discussion, which is the types of was let's say the Moloch DAO was the first headless brand. It's like crypto headless brand, which was a name that was coined much later by um, the other internet guys. And it was an interesting, um, it's an interesting concept, but basically Moloch ate um, DAO stack's lunch by having what was in essence, much poorer or much more constricted, limited software. But as an art teacher uh, person, I would say that they succeeded by having a more defined creative constraint and that made utility much higher and i think the the wisdom the wisdom that um amin had versus what dow stack was doing is that it was it was like evolving from amoeba state up while like dow stack DAOs were fully fledged primates or or mammals you know and you can't really just install Evolution, evolution needs to be done step by step. Actually, my whole uh, shtick when you hear any of my uh, last talks is about this. And it's this learning that you need to learn as a community step by step. And the, um, that's what we learned there. So having composable business models that can work headless and are collective intelligence enabled from its production style with the, the cathedral versus the bazaar. Uh, it that was a moment where that wasn't just a like open source narrative strategy. It was proven by a, attracted way more people much faster, and things like the Meta Cartel were born, etc. Uh, Meta Cartel was the first fork of Moloch DAO, and it was it would be considered like a revolution kind of thing. But it was done by the person who deployed Moloch DAO, helping the guy that couldn't get in Moloch DAO, which was Peter. So there's a lot of cool stories in there of us learning about um, the social technologies that work in this new universe, right? Sorry, if there was a tangent, um, but it wasn't just gas fees. Like we quickly went to XDAI. Um, but anyway, that friction of learning the new thing while everybody was trying to learn about yield farming, while everybody was trying to get their heads around about all of these new primitives, it certainly unfocused uh, the DAO space from the autonomous part of the mission, and then Snapshot happened. <laughs> if you want to take, that's it. no, but it's interesting you're saying that. You're saying that well, that they ate their lunch, right? By basically, how should we say, enforce, enforcing a framework that made it easier to understand and base to an extent, uh, how should we say, like human proof it, like basically making it easier for people, so that leads to adoption. It's really interesting because right now we're also seeing a lot of things happening on the infrastructure side with, you know, 
TSS as well as uh, account abstraction, which you know you can have different opinions about. You know, it adds a little bit of complexity in there and makes it harder for people to understand, especially account abstraction is what I'm finding. Uh, do you think that we might be seeing relatively soon how these technologies are being included more in the DAO? I should we say DAO tooling stack. I personally am not comfortable with making predictions. Um, it's a personal disappointment to me to see how um, a vast percentage of the DAO space is satisfied with the mechanics of like friends discussing something, deciding together on a forum, and then only using the proposal as the on-chain uh, manifestation of what was social consensus before. In my personal opinion, that's not what DAOs should be doing, especially when you're talking about large-scale protocol DAOs kind of thing. And um, my my true like excitement about DAOs is us learning how to disagree productively or to be in conflict constructively. And I think the, the whole Moloch transition killed that a little bit. There is There's not a very... Like on, on the on-chain side of the Moloch ecosystem, you don't often see a lot of dissent on-chain. You don't see people voting down proposals. If a proposal is up, it's because it already achieved a large amount of social consensus um, to be put on-chain. Yeah. And that discussion side went to the snapshot-enabled multisigs kind of thing, uh, which is basically, for whoever doesn't know what I'm talking about, is you have this like off-chain voting um, tool so there's no gas fees to actually vote or to put up proposals um but they do sort of the the software does read how many you have of said governance bearing asset could be could be liquid tokens could be nfts could be whatever you want actually as long as it has a, a on-chain address thing yeah and, basically it checks how much of something do you have? Then you sign it with your private key and store it on IPFS. And that's how basically everyone knows that you actually do have, do possess those voting powers. And um, yeah. yeah, and then Elko. And the, the beauty of Snapshot, it's, it's you have to have it up till the time of the proposal. So it solves one of the plutocratic problems that you that happens on Aragon, for example, where you can go buy the token that you need to influence a vote. So let's say you have let's say you have just five million dollars sitting around, and that community is not particularly uh, um, expensive. You can actually governance attack things by having a lot of the tokens, um, and there's no time limit. Like you can go five minutes before the the vote is over, buy the token, and then influence. You know exactly how much it costs. To actually offset, which is very dangerous, it's a, it's a huge attack vector. It's how Constitution now got fucked, by the way. Um, and you can't do that on a snapshot. The, you only count the tokens you have at the moment of the of the proposal, and that's why I think Snapshot Labs have like it was a genius compromise in terms of enabling collective intelligence, counter counter dealing with like multi-chain world, gas fees anywhere, who's ever, blah, blah, blah. Like I can actually set up a snapshot right now that is uh, having like collected governance coming from several chains, right? Um, and then you have things like guild that then creates like this met, that's when for me the DAO discussion starts to get interesting again, when you realize that the boundary of the organization doesn't matter, it's the relationship between agents and you can create meta organizations uh, from Venn diagram intersections or from multiple communities coming together. And that's a revolution yet to happen. Like we, we do have the tech for that, but we haven't really seen many instances of that being relevant, but I wouldn't ignore um, that aspect. Sorry, I don't know but if yeah. you're going too fast or too deep. No, it's, it, it, I think it's fine. But like what, uh, like it, something important to, to mention here about like this transition from monolithic frameworks to snapshot is that the snapshot is not an on-chain technology. It's uh, basically a central server, which has uh, like uh, tools of on-chain verification, but that's it. It doesn't, uh, out of the box, it doesn't trigger transactions uh, automatically uh, the way how it, used to be done back in the days so that changed uh, DAO ecosystem and DAO like um, landscape uh, quite a bit because now you don't have those 
you know, uh, sort of like treasury treasure boxes up there in, in there in Ethereum and, you know, communities working towards getting a piece of it, like by doing some work and bringing value to the, um, to the community. Uh, now you have uh, this sort of, you know, closed uh, money are usually stored in the like uh, safe, uh, previously Gnosis safe, uh, multi-signature wallet. And a small number of people have uh, access to sign transactions, execute transactions. So it's it's done not automatically, not auto autonomously. So uh, yeah. snapshot is used as a sort of way to, you know, it's almost like you vibe check the community. Are they cool with, uh, with this decision or not? But the last resort of the decision making is this small group of people who are, uh, Possessing that uh, trade. Yeah, they have the responsibility to execute at the desire of the community. Um, but in the ultimate stance, they could decide not to do that, which is not always bad. And uh, the general social consensus in the universe is that that's fine. We don't, I don't know of many stories where multi sig signers rebelled against the community decision. But here's the kick for me, and this is something I've talked about in several podcasts, but nobody seems to give much of a shit, but I do, is that I actually feel that the setup, like the medium is the message, McLuhan kind of thing. And I feel that the fact that the the fact that there's not enough dissent in, in these communities uh, is a factor of the fact that they know that in ultimate stance, if they if something really radical gets proposed, you don't have autonomous execution. And I my intuition comes from the fact that when we did have that on DAO stack, those DAOs were political war arenas. It was actually one terrifying, but eventually super fun um, that people would actually have to really like form their political groups, understand what's important for each of them, have all of these um, um, misalignments and alignment formation exercises, talking to each other a fuck ton, discussing things a lot. Uh, and you would actually end up learning about who you're working with and about yourself. You learn about what matters to you. You learn if you're, if you prefer to just be a, a conglomerate, like corrupt uh, group of politicians, like we have in our normal state where they don't really care about anything. It's just about me and my friends getting what we want, or people are actually willing to stand up and represent for things. I personally learned, for example, how cultural similarity, collateral baggage and nationality matters a lot. Um, that Israelis would often vote with Israelis and the Brazilians would quickly form a Brazilian like corner. And then the people who are of so similar social classes would like all of this informed my political intuition much more. Uh, I think like you would have to be a, a member of Congress to, to have this experience. And now we all as humans can have this kind of experience with DAOs. So I think this is an interesting uh, development at least personally for me. And it has shifted like the way I do art has shifted the, the, the center of my life and everything that I care about. Um, so we've, that was super cool. And we don't really have that much anymore. Um, and I think it's due to the design of, of the, you know, the yeah, it's, uh, uh, underlying structure. It feels like a lot of, you know this politics maybe the, the difference that uh and i don't know uh elko please correct me if i'm wrong because uh, i was not around back uh, during the dao stack times i was doing some some work with the dao stack framework in the like last months of of dao stack existence but uh it still it still exists they're in they're in Al alchemy stuff. is not supported anymore right but like no one can get rid of the contracts so contracts are still out there but anyway and there's so big DAOs I, running on modified versions of it still uh dior uh, dx DAO. Uh, a lot of like all po this politics that elko is talking about were done you know sort of publicly and uh you know you you knew who's up to what and now a lot of DAO politics, DAO politics didn't, you know, didn't disappear. They still, they still exist, but they're just more, you know, under cover within this like different hidden Telegram groups for four or five people, where most of the decisions are being made, and uh, you know, and then you have just like this, you know, cover like upfront cover that everyone sees, but that's not exactly what's going on. Okay. It? And it still it still happened a little bit back then on, on the Dustech days. 
which make what makes me personally sad is that the likelihood of somebody who is like me, a little bit weird, a little bit unattractive, a little bit impolite, but is hardworking and like talented and dedicated, the chance of somebody rising like I did a little bit, I'm going to say I rise too much, but I, at least I'm a cupcake. I might not be a, a towering cake, but I, I, I rose a little bit. I don't think it's going to happen as, as, as like sincerely and as fairly as it did before. So I think the mission, I, for me, the mission moving forward in DAOs is to reclaim that aspect, which is programmatic organizations that are a mix of learning and, and entertainment and profession. And they can have these three aspects interwoven in the thread of the like choose your own adventure path that the DAO can be. Yeah. Um, and someone who really cares, like what are we optimizing for? What we should be optimizing for is somebody who really cares getting the keys to the gate, right? And a sentence that I go to bed with and wake up, because in the crypto space, there's a lot of like, you're not going to get this. This is too complicated for you, blah, blah, blah. And people forget that none of this existed less than 10 years ago. So anyone who actually wants to get it will eventually get it. And there's no way to gate, no, no reason to gatekeep. So just to finish my rent. The sentence I go to bed and wake up with every day is like, the hobbits have to take the ring to Mordor. And we eventually turn into like Gandalfs and we're like, Arr. but in the end of the day, we're building this so that the hobbits can take the ring to Mordor. Yeah. No, it's interesting because you both kind of like mentioned two different systems, right? One, of course, is using snapshot as well as multisigs to do the voting. And then DAO stack before. But you know, Arsenia was reading one of the Daoism Systems blogs where you're talking about more modularity when it comes to how to how to form a DAO and like how this could change well, I guess it could change governance systems and just change the nature of certain DAOs. Like do you I don't know what to say, like do you have something else to add there? Because it sounds really interesting. I would love to hear of it from you know, from your point of view. Yeah, for sure. Uh so uh, like during this year's like lim quite limited amount of time of existence of DAOs, DAO tooling, and like Ethereum and you know blockchain like program programmable blockchains, uh, quite a bit of different you know Lego building blocks have been built, and that's the beauty of Web3 in general. It's because most of the things they happen on the, this open ledger, and most of the code is open source, and you know, if you want to create your own, uh, you know, smartphone, you, you you can just go and reuse what, like, you know, Apple and, like, Android have created. It's all, all source, but not in Web3. So you have all this, like, uh, this infinite amount of building blocks that you can take and combine them together. And this modular approach to DAO building is what we experiment with uh, quite a lot uh, in, in Daoism systems. We've, uh, we've been... Uh, testing it uh, and it actually quite successfully with doing good DAO uh, and uh, so, some other projects that we are working with. So yeah, I, I think that's, you know, the future of, of DAOs and Web3 in general, uh, like this modular approach when you take different, uh, different pieces and combining them together in order to achieve what you really need. Because I, I, I do think, and uh, that would be great if, if Helfer would get back and comment on that, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all, all of the DAOs are like organizations and they're different. They have different needs because basically what I think we haven't mentioned earlier, because DAO could be anything. And in, in my vision that, you know, uh, in the future, for example, uh, a group of uh, game game dev game development group can can become a DAO and create like this you know new version of skyrim based on uh, like you know whatever and the community will just create this treasury uh, put some money in and then they can fund uh, the development of aa uh, plus uh, rating sort of game or it could be you know can you imagine if a DAO buys a a football club and no one of these like Russian oligarchs own it, but like the, the actual fans, they own, uh, they, they own a club. That would be quite awesome. Right. So, right. uh, so that's why you need sort of this modular approach for DAO creations because, you know, game development is very different from, uh, from, uh, from a football fan club and definitely very different from, uh, from DeFi protocol that, you know, that manages, 
uh, like liquidity and like yield farming and, 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 and whatever. So that's why you can take, you know, these pieces of, you know, of safe and, 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 and snapshot, but also maybe some, some older contracts of, uh, of DAO stack, just mentioning what, what, what we have talked about. And by combining them together, you can create the unique experience for the community uh, that the community really requires to be successful in what they're doing. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's important that we stop thinking of the word DAO, in my opinion. You know, we have we we have all we will have. Uh, we are having now a speciation, right? A process of speciation. So let's imagine the design thinking diamond thing. We're creating alternatives. We're opening the scope, and it's a game of of balancing polarities and 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 compromises. So we will have certain use cases that are completely fine with the snapshot multisig. We have certain use, case, use cases going other directions. We're learning how to provide certain, um, it's a game of uh, uh, rights and duties, right? Uh, you're basically a citizen of a, of a thing. Um, it's enabled by, let's say the game theoretical reversing of, of Ethereum, which is a great, for me, it's a great revolution of the size of the, um, printing press, right? So the printing press allowed us to make our own books and things like that. What Ethereum allows us is like from the citizen level to create entire economies that are by definition free, um, free to, to trade and to align with other economies, blah, 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 blah. So what you're having is a fractal granular uh, speciation of mini economies that then need to create their governance uh, strategies and, and platforms. Um, it's very much the beginning, in my opinion, still, um, the word DAO means very little by itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I know what part of it is exciting to me and I want to support, which is this direction of programmatic organizations that mix entertainment, education, and profession. They're all about, uh, development of people through their self learning. So basically um, I, 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 I've been an art teacher. I've talked to a lot of people. I've been like a sort of a coach persona before in my pre web three life. And there's kind of two big polarities, which is, it's the Hawiki guy discussion, but in, in a certain way, where can I get the most for my efforts because of the, what the world needs? And so you're thinking about the career or this or that, blah, blah, blah. but also I, I, I oftentimes want to remind people like what have you been created in some way by the collection of algorithmic collection of experiences or whatever it is that we call personality or talent or whatever um, that only you could do. And that if you find that in a certain way, you put yourself in the position of most value as long as it's somewhat needed somewhere. Uh, and the hack in my head, and I might change my mind over the years, but I still haven't, that our main goal is to find out how to do, like to release as much energy and excitement from your subconscious as possible, right? So my dream, like my, how to say, uh, aspirational dream for the Dalvers is not just these political financial machines that allow us to bypass nation states, but that they optimize for the max release of energy from the subconscious to the conscious and to a maximization of human talent by people getting faster to the social, yeah, economic, I... uh, professional, whatever place that where they do the thing that only they could do. Um, so this is kind of what takes me out of bed. I agree. I, I agree. And I really see myself, Ethereum and like DAOs in particular, as a sort of liberation machine. Because it definitely changes life. It changes life of Elko. It changed my life. And I, I know a dozen of people who, you know, who went from zero to hero because of, you know, learning those technologies and getting into this, uh, this space and pr producing value. Interesting. Yeah. yeah so, okay. We're, we're kind of running out of time here. So I just want to ask one last question then, which is, you know, you both highlighted how DAOs really changed your life. Can I be a, an asshole interrupt just a second, just to make a, a second point, because we made this very beautiful sort of uh, garden of talent's vision, and it is not what happened in, a, in the bowl, right? Um, and I just want to 
be apologetic of how that's understandable for me that once you have a like a, a fast inrush of minds that were thinking in that diff, no, normal web two or sort of more whatever strategies i think it makes complete sense when you have all of these people coming in that we actually take a step back in terms of how much this forward thing like it will take some time so it is very true in my opinion that we kind of digressed on that prettier mission but it's actually the price of bringing what the tens of thousands of minds because it was doubt doubt people four years ago was like 500 man it was 500 people you know and now we're probably looking at 50,000 so yeah just, just make that point apologetic point yeah, for sure. The, the 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 conversion doesn't happen during the bull run. The conversion happens in the bear, and uh, those who stick around during the bear market that's that's the ones you who you should uh, pay attention to, uh, because yeah, I mean, and we had that conversation before we started recording, right? In the in the bull run, everyone's everyone's a genius. Like the money are flowing, the popularity is growing. Uh, the, you know, everyone's interested in you, but then the bear comes and like, you know, general pub public forgets what, what crypto is and they keep doing, you know, their regular life matrix <laughs> things. Uh, and uh, that's when, you know, the breakthrough technologies are being built. And that's when you finally have, you know, mental capacity to focus on, on, on building and creating rather than, you know, answering 100 million questions uh uh, on Telegram and, you know, looking at the price. I, I hate bull markets and they were very good, very bad for mental health. Bull markets are very bad for mental health. They can break people down. No, definitely. So, so this is quite interesting. So now that kind of switches my, my last question around a little bit, just because of what you both said here. Um, so what I wanted to finish is just like kind of looking at where we're at right now. How do we make potential DAOs more human friendly to kind of lower the barrier of entry so people can actually participate more who are not currently in the space? But it might actually be, is that something that you would say is desirable at all? I um, like the added, the added issue there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think like a couple of things, uh, make uh, DAOs more sort of user friendly kind of solve uh, DAO UX by making it more accessible. In DAOs and systems, we are also trying to solve uh, this issue. We have a, like this little project that we are working on for quite a bit already in DAO, which turns Telegram groups in, in, into DAOs by uh, bringing safe interface within uh, Telegram group. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's easier to um, to solve those DAO problems by, you know, allocating treasuries and stuff. Uh, but uh, also, you know, by e expanding use cases of DAOs, right now DAOs are uh, very, uh, very into uh, web-free ecosystem, web-free space. And most of the DAOs, they're based around like some uh, web-free idea or, or a protocol or an exchange or, or, or something like that. But as I mentioned previously, you know, if, for example, an anime fam dom can can become a, a DAO that would definitely you know kind of enlarge uh, the the um, the potential you know inclusion in, into the DAO space so it can get more people on board uh, and uh, yeah um, but also also uh, I, I think that in the future, if DAOs can become autonomous again, <laughs> that, that that would be great because that, that would make the game just more interesting. Yeah, yeah, I could I could burn your ear off for three hours answering this question, to be honest. But um, I'm trying to try to be to say I think the biggest sin that we have in the space that I wouldn't want to eradicate, but I think the it's too much. It's development from a techno fetishist perspective, um, right? And, and it's the for me the only mistake of like I think I think Tau Stack's still for me the best idea that we had uh, in terms of how DAOs could work. But it was uh, techno fetishist. It was much more about serving the larger vision of the founder than having a tr transformational lens on where 
the world is and what is the next inevitable step towards the big vision. So I would say developers, um, look for non-technical co-founders with governance experience. Listen to people like me who actually don't understand how the tech works, but have experienced the, the day-to-day of it. And don't try to cut. So you're, we are fighting a big multi-millennia snake and you can't cut the head of the snake by facing it head on. We need oblique strategies, right? So if we could have better conversations about building the next needed thing, even if it's not the most exciting and doing and, and shipping each step of the process on a transformational lens. Um, I think that's, that's the philosophical answer to your question. <laughs> the non-philosophical is said mobile first. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> let's go mobile first and let's, uh, let's, uh, have, uh, like things like push, uh, ENS, uh, notifications, like, um, push no- notification services. So making governance, um, as intrusive as Instagram and stuff, but it will never work while, a the general governor needs like, I am a painter who used to be an art teacher who went into organizational design and then got training into Waldorf uh, anthroposophy and then got trained to be a a conflict mediator, facilitator, blah, blah, blah. blah. But my education was not over. When I got into the DAO space, I need to become a a macro macroeconomics understand basic understanding. I needed to understand how basically uh, currency issuance and and how economies work. I need to understand all of this new set of, of things. Uh, we don't want the average user to have to go through this if we want them to to manage these organizations. So I think companies like one of our sponsors, uh, Recursive Onco, uh, is doing a great job in designing towards something that works in that direction. Um, I can't explain the whole thing right now, but definitely look at them. They they just went out of stealth mode, um, and also starting to plug things like subscriptions uh, or NFTs or all of these in granular installments of interactions into governance, not by airdrops. I think one, it was a, an avoidable step that needs to be forgotten, which is like having liquid, uh, financially liquid governance tokens that are used to pay salary. Like, I think that's a bad move. Uh, we, we need to iterate out of this. I am working on that technology. I am soon going to go into uh, a begging ramp. I think people call it a raise usually. I'm going to go into a begging round uh, because I feel like I have a unique perspective on how to build this tech. It might be the case that Taoism systems will be involved in that infrastructure. Um, but the, the pathways out of this are clear and the cost of it is us not becoming comfortable with this sort of almost aristocratic um, power that a group of like, let's say 3000 people have over the future of crypto. And, and it's the, yeah. honestly, honestly, the challenge ahead of us is the same after every revolution everywhere since the dawn of man, which is a VIP area, destroying its boundaries from the inside out, which has never happened. So the pressure is going to have to come from around the outside, around the outside. Um, let's see what happens. I, I like how it sounds like hipster tech aristocracy or something. Counter- That's everything. Yeah, tech yeah, counterculture. Yeah. They, they, they all bought the dip and now we're <laughs> fucked. <out. laughs> Buy the dip. Another big thing about this and because of the Discord, right? Yeah. Okay, guys. 